The world's carbon footprint has increased dramatically over the last 10 years. So what are the top industries that produce the most carbon and what are the top five technologies that can help us reduce the carbon in each sector? This is what we'll be talking about today. Here we go. First up is number five with building and construction. Building and construction produces a whopping 7% of the world's total carbon emissions. Concrete is the most used construction material. The manufacturing and the use of that concrete is responsible for nearly 10% of the world's total carbon dioxide. Concrete also uses almost 10% of the world's total water withdrawals, which we've actually made a video about here. One company trying to help solve this problem is Can Enviro. They've created a vacuum that sucks out the dust in the air during the material gathering phase and then mixes it with raw materials and an organic compound to create a concrete that is twice as robust as standard concrete and uses half as much water and carbon to create it. How awesome is that? From here, the concrete can actually be sprayed onto surfaces, saving not just the environment but also money and the time of our labourers. The new compound has been used in small villages to large commercial buildings for both structures and reinforcement of foundations. This Sydney-based company hopes to halve all carbon and water waste with inside the construction era by 2030. Next up is number four, transport. The transport industry accounts for nearly 16% of the world's total carbon emissions. However, this is one area that the world has actually done really well at in the last couple of years, mainly due to Tesla. Electric vehicles have actually been around since the 1800s. However, Elon Musk saw that the EVs needed to outperform standard vehicles if they ever hoped to be mainstream. Elon's company Tesla helped create a desire which other companies have jumped onto. As of 2010, less than 0.05% of cars were electric globally. As of 2021, that has increased to 4%, with many sources believing that by 2030, over 50% of all cars on the market will either be EV or hybrid series. Countries like Norway have already reached the 50% mark and actually are on track to be 90% by 2030. Tesla continues to plan to reduce atmospheric carbon dioxide in four major ways. Number one is the Hyperloop, which is a super fast train reaching speeds of 650 miles an hour or 1,000 kilometers an hour. That's about three times faster than high street rail and will cut down a plane ride from San Fran to LA, which is usually three hours, to just 30 minutes. This will encourage people to fly a lot less domestically and cut down a huge amount of jet fuel and the carbon it creates. Number two is the underground car tunnel. This car tunnel helps decrease congestion and therefore reduces carbon emissions as there's less traffic on the main roads. It's currently being built in Las Vegas and has plans for a New York to LA tunnel the whole way there and back. Number three is planes. Tesla has already designed their own Tesla jet and plans to put this into production in the next five to 10 years. Jet fuel is a huge contributor to CO2 and Tesla plans to be a part of that solution. Number four is self-driving with Uber or autonomous driving. Yes, Uber has partnered with Tesla to create vehicles that can drive to you, pick you up and drop you to your destination with no human driver. They believe that this service is gonna end up costing so much less than it won't be even worth owning a car in the short future. Investor group Ark Invest believes that most families will go from two cars to one and most singles and couples with no children won't even own a car in the next five to 10 years. All these great inventions of Tesla aside, COVID and isolation have also helped reduce our global carbon footprint due to less transport. Yes, people working from home have actually helped us reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by nearly 20%. Some countries like China have seen visible changes in the air pollution. Some saying it's the first time in 10 years they have seen blue skies in the CBD. Speaking of blue, did you know that by hitting that little grey button, it turns blue? Mm -hmm. In fact, by turning it blue, it helps more sustainable videos like this one get shared to more people and helps our world go that much greener. So help the world go green by making it go blue. Thanks so much. Number three is agriculture with a whopping 19%. Yes, the world wastes nearly half of all food made. From production to storage, transport to the customer home, nearly half of all food is wasted, lost or rots. That waste not only creates 19% of our world's total carbon footprint, but the agricultural industry itself uses 33% of the world's total usable water. To help with this, Post Harvest identified the two largest areas of waste and what we needed to focus on. 
From the storage side of things, they created the most accurate microsensor in the world, which combined with artificial intelligence to measure the produce health and estimate with 99% accuracy when that produce is going to ripen up to nine months in advance. This allows coolroom operators to send out produce on time, every time, reducing needless waste in storage and the transport journey. On the customer side of things, we created a whole bunch of free and fun courses. Online educational videos that show you how to properly store and use produce so we can waste as little as possible. You can even get your sustainability sticker and encourage your friends to do the same. Together, we can proactively get our waste from 45% right down to just 5% and help repair our planet. Number two is electricity. Electricity is used by over 87% of the world and the vast majority of that power comes from burning fossil fuels, which creates 27% of the world's total CO2 emissions. To combat this, Tesla once again has stepped in. Just like how Tesla made EVs cool, they're now trying to make solar panels cool, mostly by making them invisible. Before, solar panels looked large and ugly, with less than 20% of American homeowners saying they would ever get one in 2016. However, since Tesla panels, nearly 50% of Americans said they would seriously consider buying them this year alone. Tesla solar panels double as roof tiles and are within actually about a 15% price bracket as if you were to get a standard roof plus solar panels. They also come with a 25 year guarantee and the best thing of all, they can generate so much power in some cases, you can actually put the power back into the grid and make money from their app. Nearly half of all electricity in our homes is used for cooling and heating. The best things we can do to reduce our output in heating and cooling is the following three. Number one, insulate our homes. Two, double glaze our windows. And number three, insulate our hot water tanks. In many countries, it's now actually illegal to build homes without these basics already completed. In 10 years, I hope that it becomes standard that we all have to have solar. Currently, less than 6% of the world have solar panels, but according to some experts, this could increase by as much as 50% by 2050. So let us know below again, have you considered solar panels? If not, how come? Is it the price, is it the accessibility, or is it something else? Well, let me know below. And the very last is manufacturing. Manufacturing is the largest carbon emitter in the world and a major cause of global warming. When we think of manufacturing, we often think of toys, furniture, cars. However, the top 10 largest manufacturing companies in the world all have to do with energy and oil. Companies like Saudi Arabia Ramco and Chevron produce petrol and gas and chemicals that we use to power our homes and offices and move our vehicles. The, these top 20 companies have actually contributed over 480 metric tons of greenhouse gases, or roughly 35% of the world's total carbon emissions. I believe the fastest way to reduce our carbon footprint and create a cleaner planet, ideally one that can repair itself, is by doing the following basics. Insulate our home and our water tanks, which is the biggest reason or nearly 50% of your average homeowner's electricity bill. Number two will be go solar if you can to further reduce the need for outside power which in most cases burns fossil fuels to get that power. Number three would be waste less food, which is the largest use of water and the top three carbon emitters in the world. For more information about how you can reduce your own food waste, check out that video we did with Lawrence Fishburne. I'll put it right here. And let me know below, what of those top five was your favorite? What solution was your favorite? Did we miss out any? What are some practical things you could do at home to reduce your carbon footprint? And what was some maybe piece of advice you could share with others? And lastly, what's something you would like to see on our next video? Any and all comments are very much welcome. So until the next video, thank you so much and have an awesome rest of the day. Bye.